Good day, and welcome to our physical education online class. Together, we will explore knowledge and skills that will help you and your family develop a lifelong habit of physical fitness and wellness. For this session, we will talk about the nature and background of volleyball. Are you ready? Our learning competency is to describe the nature and background of the sport. Before we begin, let's have some pre-test. Pick the word. Analyze the pictures below and guess the hidden answer by combining the pictures to form a word or words. Explain your answers by giving related situations and or examples. Number 1. It is one of the most popular sports today. Played with six players. Number 2. The inventor of sports, volleyball. Number 3. This is the original name of volleyball. Good job! Before we proceed to our next lesson in physical education, let us recall our past lesson about physical fitness. Complete the cloud map below. For this session, we will discuss the history of volleyball, the rules of the game, and the gameplay. The History of Volleyball Morgan had attended the YMCA's Springfield College where he had met James Nysmith, the inventor of basketball. After graduating, Morgan continued to work for the YMCA and soon took the position of Director of Physical Education in nearby Holyoke. Having noticed that the speed of basketball made it too challenging for weaker men and older athletes, Morgan set about devising a new game. Growing on basketball's original aims of being a sport that could be played inside with a minimal physical contact, Mr. Morgan was inspired by Nysmith creativity and set out to create a sport blending the skills of basketball, baseball, handball, and tennis. Wanting to borrow some ideas as he had limited time to come up with his new invention. All the while, he was keeping in mind his goals of creating a game for all age levels and strengths. His creation was finally completed in the winter of 1895 in Holyoke, Massachusetts. At that point, William had a set of ground rules made up to facilitate the game. He used tennis net, lifted to the height of 6 feet and 6 inches. He chose a court roughly 30 feet wide and 60 feet long, probably close to 25 by 50 at first, to ensure the game could be played in the gymnasiums all around the country. Here is a short list of the rules as originally set forth by William Morgan in 1895. There are some distinct differences between the game at its inception and the game as it will be even 30 years later, in the early 1920s. One. The game will last 9 innings. 2. An inning correlates to the number playing. If one man is on each side, then an inning is one serve series per side. A lost serve is half the inning. 3. A serve must be struck and hit over the net. The server has two tries to get it in, like tennis. However, if a teammate hits the ball after the service to help it over, it is good. Four. A side only scores when serving, as in side out scoring. 5. The ball is considered dead anytime it hits the net. No net serves or playing it out of the net. 6. The line is considered out. 7. Any number of people can play, if teams are equal. 8. If a ball touches a wall or ceiling and bounces back in play, it is still alive. 
9. No limit to hits per side and no limit to hits in a row by the same player or dribbling. Mr. Morgan announced his sport as Mintonet and his presentation would include two teams of five men to demonstrate the game and its rules. After an observer, Alfred Halstead, noticed the volleying nature of the game at its first exhibition match in 1896, played at the International YMCA Training School, now called Springfield College, the game quickly became known as volleyball. It was originally spelled as two words, volley and ball. Dr. Alfred Halstead, who suggested renaming it to volleyball to better reflect the objective of the game, to volley the ball back and forth over the net. The two words were eventually combined to form volleyball. The day Mintonet had its debut, it lost its name to the term volleyball. On July 7, 1896, volleyball had its first official game. After the positive response to the exhibition game, Morgan continued to experiment with the rules, firstly by raising the height of the net and then by trying different types of balls to achieve the optimum weight and speed. Sporting Goods Company, A.G. Spalding & Bros, eventually created a new type of ball that achieved the perfect balance he was seeking. And within just few years, Morgan's game began to spread around the world. From there, William Morgan moved on from the YMCA to pursue other careers. He was said to simply be proud that the volleyball was being enjoyed by so many people. William Morgan died on December 27, 1942. His name continues to be honored in the volleyball world as the top male and female players at, at the United States Collegiate Volleyball level are awarded the Morgan Trophy each year. Let's talk about the court dimensions. A volleyball court is 9 meters by 18 meters or 29.5 feet by 59.1 feet divided into equal square halves by a net within a width of 1 meter or 39.4 inches. The team courts are surrounded by an area called the free zone, which is a minimum of 3 meters wide and which the players may enter and play within after the service of the ball. All lines denoting the boundaries of the team court and the attack zone are drawn or painted with the dimensions of the area and are therefore a part of the court zone. If a ball comes in contact with the line, the ball is considered to be in. Let's talk about the net and the antennae. The top of the net is 2.43 meters or 7 feet 11 inches above the center of the court for men's competition and 2.24 meters or 7 feet 4 inches for women's competition, varied for veterans and junior competitions. The minimum height clearance for indoor volleyball court is 7 meters or 23 feet, although a clearance of 8 meters or 26.2 feet is recommended. A line of 3 meters or 9.8 feet from and parallel to the net is considered the attack line. This 3 meter or the 10 foot line divides the court into back row and front row areas, also back court and front court. The antenna is placed on each side of the net perpendicular to the side line in its vertical extension of the side boundary of the court. A ball passing over the net must pass completely between the antennae or their theoretical extension to the ceiling without contacting them. Let's talk about the ball. Federación Internacional de Volleyball, or FIVB, states that the ball must be spherical, made of leather or synthetic leather, have a circumference of 65 to 67 centimeters, a weight of 260 to 280 grams, and an inside pressure of 0.30 to 0.325 kilograms per centimeter squared. Other governing bodies have similar regulations. Now, let's move on to the gameplay. Each team consists of six players. To get play started, a team is chosen to serve by coin toss. A player from the serving team throws the ball into the air and attempts to hit the ball so it passes over the net on a course such that it will land in the opposing team's court. The opposing team must use a combination of no more than three contacts with the ball 
to return the ball to the opponent's side of the net. These contacts usually consist first of the bump or pass, so that the ball's trajectory is aimed towards the player designated as the setter. Second, the setter sets the ball. And third, by the attacker who spikes to return the ball over the net by jumping, raising one arm above the head and hitting the ball so it will move quickly down to the ground on the opponent's court. The team with possession of the ball that is trying to attack the ball, as described, is said to be on offense. The team on defense attempts to prevent the attacker from directing the ball into their court. Players at the net jump and reach above the top, and if possible, across the plane of the net to block the attack ball. The game continues in this manner, rallying back and forth until the ball touches the court within the boundaries or until an error is made. The most frequent errors that are made are either to fail to return the ball over the net within the allowed 3 touches or to cause the ball to land outside the court. A ball is in if any part of it touches the inside of a team's court or a sideline or an end line, and a strong spike may compress the ball enough when it lands that a ball which at first appears to be going out may actually be in. Players may travel well after the court to play a ball that has gone over a sideline or end line in the air. Let's wrap up this session. Read and complete the sentences below. For our valuing, please remember that the volleyball is a great team sport that can be enjoyed by people of all ages and skill levels. And let's answer this. How does a sport like volleyball may affect a student like you on the following terms? Behavior or character, self-confidence, and overall fitness. For your post-test, let's encircle the letter of the correct answer. One. What do you do after a team gains a serve? 2. Which of the following is placed on each side of the net perpendicular to the sideline and is vertical extension of the side boundary of the court? Three, how many contacts of each team to return the ball to the opponent's side of the net? Four, what skill defined as an attempt to hit the ball so it passes over the net on the course such that it will land in the opposing team's court? And 5. What do you call a line 3 meters from and parallel to the net? Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something from our session today. See you again next session. Goodbye!